Welcome to the third part, where we will finally finish this edge of enchantment picture. I needed to finish coloring her legs, and I used the same colors which I used for her face. Deco peach as a main skin tone, and it's also important to slightly darken area where one of her legs partly cover another, and also in the area where kimono casts shadow on the legs. So I used 50% French grey and rose beige to smooth this transition between French grey and deco peach. For the ornament on the kimono I selected polychromous green gold as the main color, first of all, because gold is quite traditional in kimono patterns, kimono decorations, and also because I wanted this picture to be quite limited in colors, and green gold I already used for the leaves. But I also added some small elements using black cherry, which I also already used for the kimono parts. I decided that I want her wings to be very pale, so I covered all black lines and then I applied a little bit of cream to the tips of the wings and then added small, more colorful, more brightful accents using polychromous green gold again. I also finished the rest of the tree trunk and I used same pencils, same colors as I used for the main part. I used budget Faber-Castell Echo pencils and I just selected black and two shades of brown, dark amber and light amber. I decided that for the ground, which is visible between the roots of the tree, I will be using not bright colors, I didn't want anything to distract attention from the fairy, but still I wanted these areas to be slightly lighter than the tree trunk, so I used cream to the upper part, 50% French grey for the middle part and 90% for the bottom part. And I really love that in the lower part of the picture I have this alternation between dark area, light area, then again dark part of the roof and light part of the ground. They are still not very bright, but they are not very boring also. My idea was that this fairy is a mistress of butterflies and maybe they are born in the folds of her kimono. That's why I colored the edges of her kimono, ends of her kimono using caribensi and the same colors I used for the majority of butterflies. I also added a little bit of lavender, which is very close to the colors which I used for the kimono, and some touches of green gold. I was a little bit afraid that this area was too pale, so later I added slightly darker spots using dark grey felt tip pen and brighter blue felt tip pens, just a couple of shades darker. In the end I added a little bit of embellishment. First I used my brush and watercolors. With shining pink I sprinkled to the background area close to her knees and with lavender I added some touches to the tree trunk and to the ground. Maybe they are not very visible on camera, but in real life I can see this very delicate shining and I think that in this way picture looks even more magical. And on the last step I again used neo colors. I used white and light cobalt, very helpful color. It's a blue very close to white 
and I used these two colors to slightly lighten areas around butterflies. In this way, I think that I attracted more attention to this area because butterflies are important for the picture here. And also, I slightly covered area close to her knees on the left part of the picture where I wasn't quite happy with the light spot which I got when I applied water to the crimson on the first steps when I did background. With white neo color I outlined her wings and in this way I got the effect of glowing and I was really happy. I think that it also was a very interesting addition to this picture. Remember that I didn't use any water when I applied white and light cobalt blue crayons in this part. I only smoothed them a little bit with my fingertips if I needed to mix them with previous layers on the background, but no water at all. I used nail colors here like I would use an oil pastels maybe, so not like a water soluble medium. I hope that you will like the final result of this page and I will be happy if I would inspire you to try coloring in Meredith Dillman books. I think that they are very suitable even for beginners and also they are very inspiring to create your own stories about fairies. I thank you for watching and I hope that you will find something helpful in this video.